I just thought of a nice verse for you. Prayo Bhakti Vasarnava that I used to chant all the time that describes Krishna and Balaram. And it's in a Unfortunately, I loaded this large file in this app. I'm, I'm just not sure I can remember it, so I was hoping I'd bring it up. But apparently, the size of this file is killing my iPad. Um, it's in a wonderful meter, meter called Lamani. Sashivano Gopadesho Kishoro, Savacharaka Nabrinda Krita Mano Vijesho, Natavara Jita Vesho, Nila Pitam Barakyo, Jagatuchanane to Ram Krishna Natosmi. It's a wonderful picture of Dauji and Gopal. Jaladhara Sashivarna. Um, the color of their complexions. Jaladhara, Jala is the, uh, Jala is water, and Dhara means hold. So Jaladhara means a rain cloud. So in the summer especially, we see the storms coming in. Same thing where I'm staying now in, in the Midwestern United States in Kansas. We see the storms coming in and the clouds are so dark. And you know, oh, we had a thunderstorm just a couple of weeks ago, so bad, it took our power out for several hours. And uh, uh, there weren't tornadoes this time, but we often have, tor you know what tornadoes are? Turn off our Big turn of art, but uh, we didn't have them this time. But really, lots of rain, lots of thunder and lightning all night long. Quite amazing. But you see the clouds coming, Jalatara. They're holding lots of water and they're very dark. Jalatara and Shashivarna. Their colors are that of the dark rain cloud and the moon, moonshine. Jalatara, Shashivarna, Gopavesho. Uh, Kishora. These two young boys, and, and they're, they're both young, Kishore age, and they're uh, dressed like cowherd boys. Jaladara Shashivana Gopavesha Kishora. Gosh, I wish I could get it out, because now I'm. It's not going to happen. Anyway, it's a wonderful um, description of the two boys, and it ends. Um, I offer my obeisances to these, to this pair, these two boys, Rama, known as Rama, and Krishna. So my assignment is um, to talk a little bit about Balaram Leela. Guru Maharaj suggested, <coughs> uh, made a suggestion, uh, focused a little bit on um, where Balaram shows up in chapter 13 of the 10th canto. Chapter 13 of the 10th canto, we know, very special to us because this is where Srila Prabhupada left our vision. He was uh, translating chapter 13. Um, uh, Krishna's Brahma, uh, Brahma vi Mohana Leela, the, uh, the bewilderment of, uh, of Brahma, which um, follows right after the Aghasura Leela. This is the beginning, be beginning of Krishna's uh, cowering pastimes and uh, calf herding pastimes, actually. And uh, we know, uh, we've heard um, quite often, how this morning, usually we hear about how Balaram gets up 
goes outside out in front of the house and blows his buffalo horn bugle and calls all the coward boys, six o'clock, that's, that's when we like to make sure we can get our, get our boys up. And, uh, and hundreds and thousands of coward boys come uh, to the home of Nanda Maharaj and they all assemble and they go off and they, you know, Krishna and Balaram have breakfast and they all go off and, and uh, engage in their cowherding pastimes. This morning, um, by some accounts, according to some of the acharyas, uh, Balaram, Krishna got up very quietly, went and woke up the cows with his bugle, and went off quietly with the boys. He didn't take Balaram with him. Usually, we love, love to hear this from Guru Maharaj, how uh, Mother Yashoda, before the boys go out in the morning, Mother Yashoda does all these like little superstitious, superstitious charm things to Krishna to make sure he's going to be protected because something always happens. Boys come back with these tall tails. You know, boys, who, who, anybody here have boys? Anybody here used to be a boy? <laughs> um, actually, we all probably used to be boys. We may not remember it, but um, so the boys go out and they have adventures with Krishna and they come back and they're telling all these stories. So this is just kind of starting now. So we hear about how Mother Yashoda, you know, Subal on one side and Sri on the other, Balaram in front, and, and, and he would, and she, every morning she would tell Balaram, keep an eye on your little brother. This is another wonderful thing. Keep an eye on your little brother. Make sure he doesn't get into any mischief today. She's like very stern. He, don't, we don't want to hear these stories today. You know? um, and this is, a, this, is a, this is an amazing thing. We have a different conception. The Krishna conception is a completely different conception of God from what anyone has. It's a big topic. But one really nice thing is, not only does he have a brother, he has a big brother. God has a big brother. And he does big brother things, as we'll, as we'll see. Um, but rather than go straight to the, to the 13th chapter and straight to the business with Balaram, and there was something else I thought would, might be fun to read too, but uh, it's in that other app that I may not be able to do anything with because that huge file. Um, I'd like to start at the beginning of chapter 12. Chapter 12 is the killing of Ughasura. And Guru Maharaj kind of alluded to this uh, quite obliquely uh, this morning. And, and I got all excited. And uh, this is a really um, fun part um, of this Leela where Krishna uh, <coughs> takes uh, all his friends out into the forest to play. And Srila Prabhupada would remember this sometimes, this kind of thing. And he would tell it. I've heard, uh, I have accounts in Oh My Friend, Oh My Friend, Oh My Friend, uh, which is an exploration of uh, external evidence for Srila Prabhupada's internal life. Um, I have accounts uh, from Shruta Kirti, of course, um, Satsarup Das Goswami, and maybe Tamal Krishna Maharaj, where Srila Prabhupada would, would be remembering these, these kinds of pastimes, and he would tell it with such relish that he, you could see he was right there. And one, one, of, one of the instances, Shruta Kirti's, is Oh, it's an amazing, the whole, the whole thing is amazing. Um, this Srila Prabhupada had just been on a kind of a whirlwind tour um, of the West just before Gaur Purnima in 1975, and he ended up in Atlanta. Guru Maharaj was there. Um, I wasn't, I was in Hawaii. But Guru Maharaj was there, and you can tell some of the stories better. And he'd gone to these different temples in the West, places that he had never been. Uh, well, he'd been to Mexico City. 
You went to Japan, you went to Mexico City, he went to Caracas, Venezuela, he went to Miami, Florida, and then he went to Atlanta. All these places where there were Gorni Taididis and huge kirtans. And Srila Prabhupada, most of them Srila Prabhupada hadn't been before. And it was as though he was progressively overwhelmed with the mercy of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda as he went from one temple to the next. And by the time he got to Atlanta, perhaps it was a little too much for him. Maybe I do need that thing, that chair. Um, it seemed to be a little bit too much for him. And um, he started singing, um, oh, what was it? Parama Kuruna Pahundui Jana Mitai Gaur Chandra. And he became completely overwhelmed um, and wasn't able to carry, completely stunned in ecstasy. And the devotees didn't know what to do. And after a little while, someone decided just to start chanting Hare Krishna. And later, one evening during that visit, Shruti Kirti was up in the room, Prabhupada's room, giving him his massage. Prabhupada was lying on his bed, looking at a painting of Krishna and Balaram and the Coward Boys, and he started remembering some pastimes just like this. And he was, and Shruti Kirti said, you could tell, he was right there. He was right there in that picture. And he was, he was telling these things with such relish. And he said, you know, he was talking about these things, how the boys would steal each other's lunches. And Krishna, because he was Nanda and Yashoda's son, the king and queen of Vrindavan's son, he would bring the best lunch. The other boys would have dal rice and chapatis, and he would have puris and halava and ladus and kachoris. And, uh, and then after all, after everything was done, he would end up eating the, the other boys' dal and rice, and they would end up eating his halava, puris, kachoris, and matus. And then he said, I, I, just want, I just want to go back to the spiritual world and have some of Krishna's latus and kachoris. So I thought, <clears throat> uh, because I just like this part, and then it, this, this little section ends with a, a really nice verse that I want to remember sometimes. So, so along with his coward boys and their own groups of calves, Krishna came out with an unlimited number of calves assembled. Then all the boys began to sport in the forest in a great playful spirit. All these boys were already decorated by their mothers with ornaments of kacha, gunja, pearls, and gold. When they went to the, and when they went to the forest, they further decorated themselves with fruits, green leaves, bunches of flowers, peacock feathers, and soft minerals. All the coward boy, boys used to steal one another's lunch bags. Prabhupada loves talking about this part. Kotavana chuta chutevana kai rutaputi. Kai, that's uh, food. He wants to eat, he wants to go out into the forest and have lunch and cook breakfast and lunch with Krishna and his friends. When a boy under, uh, came to understand that his bag had been taken away, the other boys would throw it farther away to a more distant place, and those standing there would throw it still farther. When the proprietor of the bag became disappointed, the other boys would laugh. The proprietor would cry and then the bag would be returned. Sometimes Krishna would go to a somewhat distant place to see the beauty of the forest. Then all the other boys would run to accompany him, each one saying, I shall be the first to run and touch Krishna. I shall touch Krishna first. In this way, they enjoyed life by repeatedly touching Krishna. I mean, come on. What else is there? All the boys would be differently engaged. Some boys blew their flutes, and others blew bugles made of horn. 
Some imitated the buzzing of bumblebees, and others imitated the voice of the cuckoo. Some boys imitated flying birds by running after the birds' shadows on the ground. Um, we got that a little earlier today, right? Some imitated the beautiful movements and attractive postures of the swans. Some sat down with the ducks, sitting silently, and others imitated the dancing of the peacocks. Some boys attracted young monkeys in the trees. Some jumped into the trees, imitating the monkeys, and some made faces, as the monkeys were accustomed to do, and others jumped from one branch to another. Some boys went to the waterfalls and crossed over the river, jumping with the frogs, and when they saw their own reflection in, in, on the water, they would laugh. They would also condemn the sounds of their own echoes. Sometimes you see this as they would shout down the wells. They would shout um, rude things down the, down the wells and laugh when the echo would come back. So they'd say naughty words down the wells and when the echo came back, they'd crack up. <laughs> They're boys. In this way, all the cowherd boys used to play with Krishna. Oh, here's my, here's my verse. Dasyam gatanam paradaivatena mayashutanam naradarakena sakam vijahru kritapunya punja. Oh, I missed a, I missed a line. Oh, this thing is. It's itam satam brahma sukhanu bhutya dasyam gatanam paradaivatena. Mayashritanam naradarakena sakam vijahru kutapunya punja. Sorry, the formatting is funny. It says, uh, in this way all the cowherd boys used to play with Krishna, who is the source of the Brahman effulgence for the jnanis desiring to merge into that effulgence, who is the supreme personality of Godhead for the devotees who have accepted eternal servitorship and who for ordinary persons is but another ordinary child. The cowherd boys, having accumulated the results of pious activities for many lives, were able to associate in this way with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. How can one explain their great fortune? And these, um, of course, aren't ordinary pious activities. This isn't ordinary uh, um, so, after killing Aghasura demon, and there's a kind of a really sweet picture of that in um, one of uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur's songs of Shodanagati, Atma Samarpane Gela Bhima. Uh, Agni Dave has this on his newest album, and uh, I just always like this image of the cowherd boys just kind of like boldly marching into Aghasura's mouth like, whatever, cave, snake, whatever, it's cool, Krishna's got our back, <laughs> you know, ain't no thing. Um, So after the killing of Akasura, Krishna finds a really nice place, thinks it's a perfect place for a picnic. The, cows, the calves wander off and somebody notices and Krishna says, "Never, it's cool, you guys just stay and enjoy your lunches. I'll go get the calves and I'll be right back. And then a little intrigue happens in the meantime while Krishna's gone. Lord Brahma, who along with the other demigods was really amazed by the whole Aghasura Leela, thought, hmm, I've got to check this out. And he, did, I, he decided to test his power against um, Krishna's power. He's thinking, well, Krishna's, this is pretty interesting. He looks like a little boy. As, as Guru Maharaj says, kind of reminds me of my guru, my lord. Um, but he's not acting right. And, and as we know later, at um, the end of chapter 13, beginning of chapter 14, he doesn't, I mean, he, Krishna is not looking right at all. He's not acting like a guru, you know, with all the right mudras and anything. What's his mudra? He's got um, 
his fruit, yo fruit yogurt, and rice in, his, in the wrong hand. I mean, you know, not only has Lord Brahma been watching these boys, you know, take food out of each other's mouth and put it in the other kid's mouth and, you know, feeding Krishna out of their mouths and everything like that, which, is, which has to be absolutely astonishing for him. But, uh, and here's, here's the Supreme Personality of God, whom he knows is the Supreme Personality of God, walking up to him with dirty bare feet and a snack messy snack. Anybody ever had this? Fruit, rice, and yogurt? We used to call it Yashoda Yummy when I taught in the group. It was. Kids loved it. Put enough sugar in it. You know, rice, yogurt, mix in some fruit. It's, you know, like a kind of fancy fruit salad. But it's messy. Um, and there's Krishna standing. I always like my, my, one of my favorite pictures ever is the original Krishna book picture, 19, from the 1970 Krishna book. <laughs> my mom was an artist, I remember my mom was an artist and um, I left the temple for a little while um, toward the, maybe in the fall of 1970. And uh, I took my Krishna book uh, and, and I spent a little time at my mother's house before I went back to the temple and I, I was, I, you know, I said, Mom, my mother was an artist, and I said, Mom, you've got to see these paintings in this book. They're amazing. <laughs> They're adorable. In many ways, um, and actually in many ways, they're superior to the so-called more sophisticated paintings in the later editions, but um, technically, they, they, in many ways, they, they were kind of naive. But um, my one of my favorites was Krishna standing in front, of, in front of Lord Brahma, just kind of like looking up with this really sweet, innocent face, listening to all these really cool prayers. And it's like, okay, um, you know, like my friends are waiting. <laughs> Can you come on? So um, Lord Brahma decides um, to take Krishna's friends and the calves. Krishna comes back. Krishna couldn't find the calves because Lord Brahma had taken them. And then he comes back and he can't find his friends because Lord Brahma had taken them. And so by the, his, with his power of yoga maya, he expanded himself into all the friends and all the calves. And we know that during the ensuing year, um, all the mothers and, and all the mother cows' affection for their sons and their calves increased just as if their calves and their little boys were Krishna himself. And Balaram didn't come out. Remember, Balaram didn't know about all, this, all, all these goings on. This isn't one of those times when they came back and they said, wow, well, I guess they talked about the killing of Lagasura, but they didn't say, wow, you know, Lord Brahma stole us, kidnapped us, and the calves. It was, a, you know, it was a mystery. And Balaram became progressively mystified over the years. And a few days before the end of the year, he just said, this is wrong. There's, this, there's something going on here. And um, so... Here we are, this is text 35 in the 13th chapter. Rajasya Rama Premarakher Viksha Kantam Anukshanam Mukta Staneshva Apatyeshvapi Ahetu Vid Achintayat. Because of an increase of affection, the cows had constant attachment even to those calves that were grown up and had stopped sucking milk from their mothers. When Baladev saw this attachment, he was unable to understand the reason for it. And thus he began to consider as follows. Hmm. <coughs> and Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur explains, um, says everybody was covered by Yoga Maya, including Balaram, by Krishna's desire. 
Um, and he explains why Balaram was, was covered by Yoga Maya. He says, uh, you know, because they were covered by Yoga Maya, even though everybody noticed that they had so much more affection for the calves and the cow and the cow reporters, they didn't understand it. But nobody really thought to look into it. And after a while, Krishna gradually began to withdraw the Yoga Maya from Balaram. He says, Baladeva is the elder brother of, uh, of the cause of the universe and his dear friend, so Krishna should not have deceived him. And remember, um, as uh, uh, this is something I wanted to start with, but I got a little too excited. Um, as Guru Maharaj reminded us, uh, Krishnadas Kaviraj tells us in the sixth chapter of Adi Lila of Chaitanya Charitamrita, and I have to, I have to say, we, at at, uh, at Bhaktivan in Kansas, um, Indra, my friend Indranuja, his wife Lalita Saki, and I, and along with um, sometimes one of our neighbors, um, have been reading Chaitanya Charitamrita beginning with the first chapter. And when you read Chaitanya Charitamrita, even though it, the emphasis is really the Madhya Lila, don't skip Adi Lila. It's amazing. And, oh, and challenging here and there. Um, the, uh, the, the tattva that's given, um, particularly chapters five and six describing uh, the glories of Lord Nityananda, who, who uh, Lord Nityananda and uh, Dwaita Acharya are. Um, you have to pay really close attention, maybe make notes, flow charts or something, you know. It can be very complicated. And chapter seven, um, you might want to set aside a few months to read through that chapter a few times because Srila Prabhupada, Lord Chaitanya confronts Prakashananda Saraswati and his sannyasi friends in Varanasi and uh, takes their philosophy apart. When Prakashananda asks him, why don't you, why do you hang out with these religious fanatics instead of with sannyasis and do this nice sannyasi dharma of studying Vedanta? And Lord Chaitanya tells him, well, you know, my guru said I'm just a fool. So I should just chant the holy names of Krishna. And then he proceeded to take their uh, philosophy apart. And uh, in his purport, Srila Prabhupada shows the utter absurdity uh, of the philosophy uh, taught by um, Shankaracharya, especially as presented by a couple of his followers. And it can be difficult and hilarious to read, sometimes at the same time. So, though Krishna should have, uh, oh, so, in chapter six, Krishna Das Kaviraj remind, uh, tells us, Bhukta uh, Abhiman Mula Se Balaram, that the, the, the very uh, ability to conceive of ourselves as devotees of Krishna has its root in Baladev, Sevaka Bhagavan, right? And uh, and he's by and there he's explaining, you know, how it is that a Dwaitacharya sees himself um, as a servant of Lord Chaitanya. So he says, though Krishna should have revealed everything to Baladev before this, he didn't. He did not because he did not want Bal Balaram to suffer any separation for, from Sri Dhamma and his other friends for the period of a year. Krishna himself didn't suffer any separation because he was close to them in an expanded form that searched for the calves. But Balaram didn't appear in any expanded form. And then the Yoga Maya was gradually withdrawn um, so that Baladev could take the viewpoint of a, of a devotee and could actually have some experience of Krishna's power. 
So Balaram then wonders, Kime tadat bhuttameva vasudeva ki latmani rajasya sat, uh, uh, satmanas toke shvapurvam prema vartate. What is this wonderful phenomenon? The affection of all the inhabitants of Braja, including me, toward these boys and calves is increasing as never before, just like our affection for Krishna, the super soul of all living entities. So I mean, Balaram's amazed that even he's feeling increased affection for his friends and for these calves. And uh, it just amazed him. He found it at Bhuta. Where's Mayapur? Mayapur in here? Oh. We had a calf born at our Darya. Beginning of two, very beginning of 2009. It was a we had snow on the ground there that day. It was really cold. And I was down in my yurt, and Mayapur came running down in the morning, and he said, Babu, Babu, come, come fast. Goloka's having a baby. We had no clue that this cow, Goloka, was pregnant. So I said, Goloka is pregnant? He said, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so, uh, when Guru Maharaj called later that day, I guess it was, uh, we told him that a calf had been born, and so he named him Advaita. Um, he's a little punk. <laughs> he used to beat up his father at, uh, at a Seva. He's a little punk. Um, what is this mystic power, and, and where does she come from? Is she a demigod or a demoness? She must be the illusory power of my master, Lord Krishna. For who else can bewilder me? So the yoga maya is being re uh, re uh, withdrawn in stages. So Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur explains, as yoga maya removed the second part of her influence, Balaram thought for a moment about this and invoked his power of omniscience to understand the cause of his surprise. And he thought, it is definitely a display of mystic power or maya, but what kind of maya and who caused it? Is it the divi maya of the demigods, like Brahma appearing as the boys and calves, to test their ability to attract or to attract us to them? Are these boys not really Sri Dhamma and others? Is it Nari Maya, created by some sages who are testing their knowledge by assuming the forms of the boys and calves? Is it Rakshasi Maya? So he's going through all these things, and somebody tri you know, tricking, you know, trying to trick us so that they can kill us by disguising themselves as the boys and calves. You know, they infiltrate like spies. And then, as the third portion of the yoga mayas dissolved, Balaram started thinking, this mystical change must have been caused by the yoga maya potency of my master Krishna. Though other potencies cannot bewilder me, even I, he's the supreme personality of God. But he's Sevaka Bhagavan. He says, even I cannot check the power of Krishna's yoga maya which is filled with pure knowledge. On the other hand, the Mahamaya of my expansion, Mahavishnu, who creates the Mahatattva easily, bewilders Brahma and all others. Thinking in this way, Lord Balaram was able to see with the eye of transcendental knowledge that all these calves and Krishna's friends were expansions of the form of Sri Krishna. Lord Baladev said, O oh, Supreme Controller, these boys are not great demigods as I previously thought, nor are these calves great sages like Narada. I can see that you alone are manifesting yourself in all varieties of difference. Although one, you are existing in different forms of the calves and boys. Please, briefly, Explain this to me. 
having then been requested by Lord Baladev, Krishna explained the whole situation and Baladev understood it. So, um, uh, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur explains that Balaram could only understand all of this um, only after actually looking at Krishna. And uh, then Lord Brahma came back after a moment of his reckoning. In um, I think it's in Gopal Champu, I think it's Jiva Goswami, says that um, that uh, this happened I mean, five or six days before the end of the year, and apparently Baladev was so peeved with Krishna, so angry with Krishna about pulling this trick, that he wouldn't go out with him for a few days. He just he stayed back. He stopped going out with Krishna. He was so upset. I, I was a big brother. And I know that there were, you know, sometimes I was very protective of my little brother and sister. And sometimes I was so mad. Of course, there were also times when I would do things, huh, my sister and I would do things, and uh, we would end up blaming our little brother Lenny for Lenny. So, so this is a wonderful thing that we see in Balaram, that um, Although in many senses he's identical with Krishna, he's also different. He's different in complexion. Jaladara Sashi Varna, right? These two boys, one has this dark complexion like this summer storm cloud, and, and the other uh, like moonshine. And they have different, little different moods. Um, Krishna is just especially in Raja, Krishna seems to be, and it's pretty much all about him, right? And well, not really, because he is all about his devotees. And we see that in Bhagavad Gita, when he's, when he's talking with Arjuna. And Arjuna is not even as intimate a devotee uh, as, as the, uh, the coward boys and the coward girls and, and the older residents of Vrindavan. So if he tells even Arjuna, um, don't worry about anything because what it all comes down to is love. I just want you to love me. It's like he goes, in the, he goes through, he goes, he goes through the first half of Bhagavad Gita, and he comes to this, comes to the ninth chapter. The most secret of secrets, right? He tells Arjuna, "This is this is the most. Don't you, you can't share this with anybody." Just like we we hear about these pastimes of Lord Chaitanya sometimes, you know, and and they were devotees who were there were admonished, "Don't tell anybody about this." And we wonder, why? How is it in Chaitanya Bhagavat or Chaitanya Charitamrita? <laughs> Nobody told anybody. How are we hearing about it 500 years later? So Krishna tells Arjuna, okay, I'm going to tell you really, really big secret. He has this big wind up through the ninth chapter to this big secret, and then he gets to it right at the end. And what is it? Just love me. The other stuff, that's cool, that's interesting, yeah. But really, just love me. I'm telling you this because you're my friend and I love you. And it's a, it's a line so nice, he says it twice, right? Once right in the middle of Bhagavad Gita and then once right at the end. 
And he said, again, he said, I can tell you something, this is, fasten your seatbelt for this surgery because this is it. This is the thing right here. And he says, just a moment. And everything will be okay. I promise you this because you're my friend and I love you. Trust me. And how are you going to love me? All the other stuff that I've been talking about for the last couple hours? Eh. It's okay. But don't worry about it. The, whatever conceptions of Dharma there are, don't have to worry about them. Not only do you not have to worry about them, turn your back on them, walk away from them, forget them completely. Sarva Dharma Parityaja, reject them. How? Put it completely, forget it. And then we come to Srimad Bhagavatam. And how does the Srimad Bhagavatam begin? Dharma Prochita Kaitavotra Paramo Nirman Sadam Satam. Dharma Prochita O Prabhujita. Now that we have completely given up, now that for those who have completely given up all this cheating religion, and Krishnadas Kaviraj tells us very starkly what we mean by uh, Kaitava Dharma when he talks about this verse in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Dharma Artha Kama Moksha Vancha. This is all cheating. The desire for personal virtue, for making progress in the material world and enjoying the fruits of that progress and attaining liberation when you when become frustrated with those things, that's all completely cheating religion. Forget it. Throw it out. Flush it. Why? Because that stuff's about you. That's personal personal stuff. We don't want that. Who is this Bhagavatam for? Those who have completely given up this cheating religion. Any kind, any religion with any sort of selfish aim at all. And whose hearts therefore are completely pure because they're completely free of envy. They don't have any self-interest. That's, and when we've come to that position, now we've got something to talk about. Lots to talk about, right? When we reach in the Bhagavatam, so much to talk about that it makes our heads spin. And we need, need help sometimes keeping it straight. And that conception of ourselves as servants of Krishna, that comes from Balaram. He's the root of that. He's the original guru in that sense. He's the source of our spiritual strength. And he's Krishna's big brother. <laughs> so if he can take care of Krishna, then he can certainly, he can certainly take care of us. Um, and he's someone um, worth taking shelter of. Um, anyway. I was um, really happy when Swami shared those verses with us this morning because I saw that he had posted them on Facebook uh, sometime yesterday. And I just thought, oh, wow, that is really cool. I wonder where that's from. And he told us, friends forever. So, um, 
So this is something um, we can aspire for, this kind of company, this kind of shelter. I wanted to take a look at the killing of Pulambasura from, uh, yeah, from in Gopal Champu. But I'm afraid. I'm afraid I won't be able to. Make the mistake of opening this enormous file. In my little bitty iPad. So um, I'll stop there and see if anyone has any questions or anything they'd like to add, any realizations they have about Baladev as the root of the Bhakta Abhiman, the, the, uh, the concept of identifying ourselves as devotees of Krishna. I honestly don't have to talk to eight o'clock. <laughs> really? I have one question. Rohini, thank you. So, uh, so Balaram presides over Satyarasa, right? But I remember once Guru Maharaj says that he also presides over uh, Asa. Rasa, the Comic-Con Rasa, right? And uh, could you say something about it? Because he's so serious about it. At the same time, he presides over the kind of Rasa. Ah, Subaram Shibodhi Saki, Masaki Rasa. And Kiri Sushani Guru Maharaj mówił, że on również Stoi jak na czele też e, e, hasja rasa, to jest taka komiczna rasa. Te wszystkie żarty, co wychodzą w rozrywkach Krishna z chłopcami, z narzami, to są właśnie w tej rasie. E, I pytałem się o tym Maharadze, żeby mógł coś powiedzieć, bo Bara wydaje się takim bardzo poważną e, e, formą Krishna. E, a w tym samym momencie też był strasznym radem i tak dalej, więc e, a w tym samym momencie też jest e, e, przywodzi tej, tej rasy, która jest komiczna. I honestly can't think of anything offhand, I'm sorry. Because we, yeah, we do, we do tend to see him serious as the big brother yeah. too often. Um, we know that later on he also um, disagrees with Krishna about um, different um, different things that Krishna does, Krishna's relationships with different um, devotees. Um, he has some special affection for uh, Duryodhana, which complicates their relationship as the battle for a uh, battle of, uh, of Kurukshetra approaches. So. He, he can't go against Krishna, although he's really upset. Um, and, uh, and he can't take Krishna's side against Duryodhana because he's like a patron to Duryodhana. So he goes away on pilgrimage, just kind of puts, gets himself out of the picture. And there's some, a couple of us, I can't remember offhand right now. When Arjun kidnapped Subhadra, he was also mm. upset. But yeah. Right. <coughs> right. So, he and Krishna, in many senses, aren't one. Just as Srila Sridhar Maharaj said about he and about himself and Srila Prabhupada, they're not one. They have the same business. As Guru Maharaj likes to say, they fell from the same tree. 
Um, but uh, 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 Baladev has his own mood. Um, and uh, sometimes he has to scold Krishna, we know, earlier with the. Um, it was Baladev who went to Nishoda and accused Krishna of eating dirt. And Krishna, Krishna was such a, he's lying, such a liar. Those of us who have brothers and sisters probably recognize this. He's just making, it's fake news. Just making things up, he's trying to get me into trouble. He's always trying to get me into trouble, big brother. Um, and so, Mother Yashoda grabbed Krishna and made him, made him open his mouth. She looked inside and uh, couldn't handle what she saw. There was this old movie, you, know, you can't handle the truth. The guy, uh, Jack Nicholson's line, you can't handle the truth. Sometimes um, the truth is a little hard for us to wrap our minds around the mother you showed her, she looked inside Krishna's mouth and she saw everything, including the earth with Vrindavan, with her looking inside Krishna's mouth, with everything in it, you know, one of those kind of mirror things. And then she just, oh, boy, that was weird. And then she went back to scolding him, told him, told him to behave. So um, it's a little hard for me to think of, of instances that would uh, illustrate how Balaram is, is uh, in charge of Hasyarvas as well. Hasyarvas is one of the secondary uh, Rasas, Gurmur Rasas. Uh, Lord Balaram, at some occasion, became uh, intoxicated by different substances like baruni and others. So there is some deeper philosophical meaning of, of this tendency of him. <laughs> because some devotees can be really As the question is, what is the proper recipe for baruni? <laughs> <laughs> How long do we let it sit? <laughs> And, uh, and how many honey cigars shall we have tonight? This was a, this was a Guru Kula staple back in, when I was a teacher. One month ago we went to Braj and to one place when there is a uh, video of Lord Bala and whole village preparing for him some beverage of um, cannabis, something like that. <laughs> and they take him prasadam, so it indicates that you know, you like so. How how we can? Well, there is some some deeper. Maybe he's intoxicated love of God. Therefore, the tendency. How we should? You know. Well, he is the supreme personality of Godhead. They also chew betel and pan, and uh, we don't, as sadhakas. And so they they play on Giriraj, and as sadhakas, we don't. Because Krishna is also crossing some uh, Harvey principles. She's mm. dancing with, uh, with other wives and stealing. But this, there are some uh, philosophical explanations of that behavior. So what about Lombana? I honestly um, don't know. Um, I haven't been to the temples, those Dauji temples where they offer pang. Mm -hmm. um, oh, pang, yeah, this pang. Pang. <laughs> we, we need, we should, in the United States, in the United States, this plant is becoming progressively legalized. 
So perhaps we need to recipe for this as well. <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> Although there's a new administration and the new Attorney General thinks that good people don't use such substances, so perhaps these things will be rolled back if it's possible. I don't know, but I don't. Um, I don't know. That sounds like a good question for a Q and A session. It's a Balaram themed question. I don't know whether we could get the. Recipe for Baruni from. Because actually, this, uh, this uh, whatever we can call the liquor or some beverage is mentioned is non smith. So there are some kinds of alcohols, to be honest, and Baruni is one of them. But unfortunately, we can't find the proper recipe for it. So. <laughs> 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 I mean, this is some sattvic intoxication. Like the Vivida, we are talking about uh, Balara and his, when he was enjoying the gopis because he thought that he is intoxicated and unable to, you know, do something against him and defend him. <laughs> so. well, he learned differently, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> he was quite easily dispatched. There's an element of Hashia in that story. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do remember Guru is getting a big kick out of certain elements of that story. Prabhu. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking that uh, these uh, offerings of Aruni and, and Bhang and so on. Uh, are those meant to kind of showcase how these personalities are, are, are like kings and, and, and great enjoyers? Uh, like to, to show in a very graphic way how they're different from us. Like in, I don't know if people still do that, but in books you can read about how uh, previously in many temples they would offer Krishna a hookah, hmm. a water pipe. With, with either with very strong tobacco or then also sometimes with cannabis. Mm -hmm. so, so, so for him to enjoy, because he's the greatest enjoyer. So, so, so it, it's, a, it's a very strong statement of, of showing that, that, uh, that you are the Lord and I'm the servant, that I offer you something uh, that I'm not even allowed to take to prasad. Because oftentimes we might like we make our favorite food for Krishna, so he sanctifies <coughs> it and then we eat it. But but if we would offer him baruni or or bhang or something like that, we couldn't even take the prasad. Right. So it would be very kind of a, a graphic way of showing that that you are a, you are the enjoyer and I'm the servant. I think that's a good way of looking at it. Um, just as when Krishna ended up marrying 16,100 wives. Mm. Um, I got into a discussion some years ago, maybe 20 some years ago, late 90s, with a god brother um, um, indirectly. Well, it was, it ended up being a discussion of, of the, of the um, topic of polygamy and uh, I was my point was that if someone wants to talk wants to discuss polygamy especially if they wanted to advocate it they needed to do so very carefully they needed to cite their sources very carefully of course I was being the dandy Mr. English professor you've got to cite your sources and you have to cite them in context so many things. I was um, showing off a little bit, perhaps, um, but I definitely um, did want to make a strong case for you know, don't just pick and choose quotations from here and there. I think that you can make a case for that because oh, here are all the places where Sri Prabhupada says you should not have many wives. So many places and. He countered with, well, 
Krishna had 16,108 lives. That's Krishna's example. That's Lord Krishna's example. And I said, no, actually, if you read in Krishna book, Srila Prabhupada makes it very plain that Krishna accepted 16,108 wives uh, to assert himself as the Supreme Personality of God, to show that he was different from us, that he couldn't, because that he was doing something we couldn't even think about. Um, and the example Srila Prabhupada wants us to follow is that of Lord Ramchandra, who accepted Ekapadam Prat, and one wife throughout his life. Um, so, yeah, so uh, one, uh, perhaps one way of looking, perhaps one way of looking at such offerings is just as, as Virgo suggests, that um, these are the kinds of things that um, uh, you know, great kings would be offered. Uh, something very enjoyable. And it's outside of our outside our scope of enjoyment. Something that you know, we shouldn't contemplate, even to taking the prasad. Um, we were told not to take the palm that was offered to the deities, even. Um, so, um, yeah, so that's that's one way of looking at it. However, I think. I think it's a question that st still might be open for a uh, one of the Q and A sessions. <laughs> how, how, how do they say that? Above my, it's above, might be a little above my pay grade. And I certainly don't want to be on record suggesting. Remember, it was a joke. <laughs> there anything else? Well, even um, even before pointing out or reminding um, us that uh, Baladev is the uh, root of the devotional identity, I wanted to um, thank you all for bringing me here yet again. Um, your company is one of the high points of my year has been um, for the last three years, and I, I'm looking. I, I look forward to it um, every year. The the journey is a little arduous. It's long flights, um, sometimes long layovers that get longer, as, as as happened this time. Our plan was to leave from Warsaw, so a three and a half hour layover turned into a six and a half hour layover. And the, we had to make another connect, later connection. Four trips to the airport for Karnam, <laughs> I think. Um, but um, I, at, a, at every turn, I reminded myself, this is a few hours, and I've got 10 days with these devotees, and it's, it's, it's more than worth it. And I'm very grateful um, um, that you um, bring me here every year um, with Guru Maharaj. It gives me a little extra opportunity to spend some time with him, um, which is um, very important for me. Um, but I also very much appreciate uh, spending time with you. Um, a couple of you are old friends, really old friends, uh, like uh, especially Mayapur and Gokul Chandra, we've been through a few things together at uh, Dari and Madhuban. Um, done some, a lot of service together. And Rohini also at, uh, at Odaria and, uh, and Sagarahi. Rohini was our go-to guy. We had, everybody just had so much admiration um, for Rohini. If something needed to be done, he just did it. He didn't ask questions, he didn't gripe. Mostly that we heard, <laughs> um, and uh, you know we had uh, we had so many things. We had firewood for the 
for the festivals because of Rohini. Mm -hmm. um, things were cleared on the land because of Rohini. So it's, uh, it's a, a great pleasure. And then the friends that I've made during my visits here, um, so many of you, I'm always happy uh, I'm always happy to see you, and it makes me happy. Makes me happy to be a devotee. It makes me happy to be. Um, makes me happy to be part of the sangha, and uh, makes me very happy to be under your protection. So I, I'm very grateful that you um, brought me here. That you're willing to um, put up with me, put up with my bad jokes and my surfing stories and things. And I will try to repay you with a little service, I guess, over the next few days. Tomorrow's like a day off for me, though. <laughs> Full day for Guru Maharaj, day off for me. Thank you so much, Hare Krishna.